Hello, Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the 24 Good hour live job, stream. Robert. If you can't tell and, and it's, it's not obvious to you, I am dog ass tired right now. Um, we are in our, how does math work? We are in hour 20 of these 24 hours. Um, so we're, we're talking, th this panel, we're talking Man of Tomorrow and the, the future of the DC animated movie franchise with, uh, with Owen Likes Comics and, oh. uh, and Comic Drake, formerly Trailer Drake, formerly also Game Theory. <laughs> I also uh, like comics though. Yes. Let that be known. So, uh, so, so I'm tired. You know my thoughts on Man of Tomorrow. We put a, a, a review up on the, uh, the the channel already. So I'll let you know these two fine gentlemen kick off the conversation and I will interject every now and then um, <laughs> to act as if I'm not actively falling asleep. Um, so take so it away. Gonna happen, so what's gonna happen is Matty's gonna put on the, you know, the glasses that make it look like you're awake mm. when you're actually asleep. So he's just gonna sit in the background and. What you'll I, see for the next hour is just pre-recorded. Right here, we're gonna weekend at Bernie's. Just gonna. Go to, all right, y'all, 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 right. kick it off. Now he's gone, and we've got his, we've <laughs> no, got his I'll, live stream. I'll, uh, I'll sit up. I'll okay, sit so up. No, anyway. it's, our li it's our live stream now. Go to sleep, Maddie. We're good. <laughs> that, that was an order. So, well, I mean, so yeah, DC animated movies. Um, like Matty said, you know, Superman: Man of Tomorrow has recently come out. Spoiler alert: It's amazing. I love it. I'm tweeting about it constantly. Um, I watched the review you guys did in preparation when I was putting the notes together for this. Um, just as like, just to go over it as kind of like context for what we're going to talk about. I agree. I think it's a really, I've kind of been mixed on some of the more recent animated movies. So that was for me such a refreshing change. It's so mm. stylistically, it's so different from anything that they've done before, really. I love the, the cell shaded look of it. I love the, the different influences, how it was like, it borrows elements from like Superman Earth One, American Alien. There's a little bit of like Man of Steel in there, but it, it somehow tells like a very familiar story in a really original endearing way. And I think that idea there is something that I kind of want to touch on um, throughout this panel, throughout this discussion, is that, you know, we've been in this phase with the DC animated movies for the last like, decade of either the, you've got the straight to, uh, like the direct adaptations of graphic novels like Dark Knight Returns, Year One, Killing Joke. And then you've also got like the new 52-esque shared universe, which obviously that's come to an end now with Apocalypse War and Man of Tomorrow is kind of ushering in whatever the future will be. Um, so I kind of want to chat about our feelings towards Man of Tomorrow and not so much about the film itself, but what it does differently to pretty much everything that's come before it and what we'd like to see and what we think we might see going forward with the DC animated universe. Do you think we'll see another kind of like shared universe style thing? Do you think we'll get more kind of self-contained movies? Like for one, I, I would love another kind of Superman movie in the vein of Man of Tomorrow carrying on this because I think that's created a really interesting corner of, of the universe there. But um, Drake, I'm gonna throw it to you. You watched Man of Tomorrow yesterday, am I right? Well, yes, because I, I definitely can't watch it tomorrow because we have the panel today. That is how time works, my dude. So just, well, like, listen, it's been quarantined for a while. I don't know how time works anymore. Yeah. Like, Superman yesterday it was tomorrow, a Drake, man of watching movies yesterday. There it is. No, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was talking to Owen about this uh, when we were prepping for this panel. Um, I haven't watched a lot of Superman movies. Like, it's funny because, you know, my entire job is comic books. I have never seen the original Superman movies. I've only seen uh, Man of Steel and Batman Very Superman. You've not even seen Superman for the quest for peace? No. Drake, the fight on the moon. It's amazing. I wouldn't know. Superman. Superman rebuilds the Great Wall of China with his eyes. <laughs> I'm, you pretty, know that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, sure that Owen's being facetious. I'm pretty sure that's the one everyone hates. I am wouldn't I, know. I, right? I, like, I, I'm so tuned out of the discourse on it, honestly. It's, like, I mean, it's been so long since I've seen any of those those old Superman movies. So I, I, I don't I don't have any like firsthand knowledge. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just like trying to remember what I've heard other people say. Well, see, but that's the thing though is that you know 
my exposure to Superman is admittedly a little limited. You know, I read the comics, but not as much as other heroes, you know, definitely not like Batman who carries the entire DC universe on his shoulders. Uh, you know, I really like a lot of the stuff I've been reading recently, you know, well, well not recently, recently with Bendis. I'm talking like, you know, beginning of Rebirth. Um, I liked- The I, Pete Tomasi era. Exactly, uh, the great quality stuff. And I really enjoyed American Alien by uh, He Who Must Not Be Named, which is why I enjoyed uh, Man of Tomorrow so much. I really yeah. liked that uh, that aspect of it. And Owen, I think you really hit the nail on the head, like the uh, the cell shaded, uh, like hard outline look of, of this, just it feels like a comic book brought to life, which is something that I, I really enjoyed. It does, and it's, sorry to just interject this. No, no, it's go ahead. funny because when the when like the initial first look and the trailers for man of tomorrow came out and i saw that they were going for this art style i honestly wasn't too thrilled about it obviously it's very similar to like uh, other cartoons like archer and as someone that's uh, recently watched the entire series of the mtv spider-man cartoon from the early 2000s mm -hmm. i am not easily won over by cell shaded animation Ah, this because just sounds that, like Legends of the Wind Waker all so over again. That hurt I, my I, eyes. I will, I will, I will say, uh, um, despite the fact that it looks cell shaded, uh, Tim Sheridan has confirmed to me that it's not. It's all two D animated. Wow. Uh, well, so, okay, hang on. There were some three D segments in there. I saw, I saw this uh, Lobo's bike do a little turn. It looked three D. I see, saw that shit I, in Legend of Korra. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, there might, there might be like I assume there's some probably 3D like some aspects, kind of but, but he, the it. majority, at least, is 2D animated uh, yeah. from 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 what uh, the writer of the movie told me. No, yeah, no, I mean, it's clear, it's clearly like mostly 2D animated, but there was like a few little bits and pieces that I could tell were 3D. Yeah, it's funny because you know, like I said, when the first look came out, I wasn't thrilled about the animation style. But like you said, you know, when you see it in motion and when you see it in the context of the film mm. and the story they're trying to tell them, kind of like the world that they're trying to craft, it's such a perfect fit and it works so well, you know. it Like you said, it feels like a, a comic book brought to life and, you know, not to kind of throw too many kind of like hyperbole comparisons out there, but in the same way that I wasn't originally sure how I'd feel about the animation style in something like Spider-Verse. And sure. then like, as you get into that movie, you realize that, oh yeah, like this movie has to be designed and drawn in this specific way and i think that mm -hmm. mana tomorrow um does that and I, I especially kind of appreciate the fact that all of the kind of i'm gonna just use the acronyms and act like i belong on this channel uh and like all of the dekamu uh movies all have this kind of like very similar look and art style to them and obviously before that you have like the bruce tim style which is kind of running through all of, of that universe that now, hopefully, you know, each different film is going to have a very unique feel and very unique art style. Even if there are like some connective tissue to kind of build a bigger DC world, each different corner can have a very unique and distinct feel, which is something that I very much want to see kind of make these, all these characters are so different. You know, Superman's so different to Batman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Flash and Aquaman, Shazam and, and so on. They all have very different feels. And when you read the comics, the comics read differently when you watch the mm -hmm. animated shows they feel different so i'm hoping that in some of these future movies they'll be able to replicate kind of like the individual feels of, of the characters which i think in turn will make it even more special when they all come together again and that's kind of like a problem that i have i mean listen i love the marvel movies to death but they do kind of feel a little homogenized and they do feel like especially these days where it's kind of bled over into the comics <clears throat> every marvel character feels like just a varying blend of, of charming and sarcastic. They all feel like the same character for the most part. Basically, every Marvel character now feels like it was written by Bendis. I mean, yes. Which can be a good thing and a bad thing. I, well, I but also say. every character was written by Bendis for a while, so. That's that's most probably why pretty much the like, the entire like modern era of Marvel is kind of like created and kind of orchestrated by what Bendis has done there for the past decade. So it does kind of have a homogenized feel. And it's like, it's not to say that having like singular voices working on a project is bad. You know, look at the the original uh, DC animated universe, the Bruce Tim Paul Dini exactly. universe. You know, that's two, you know, I know there's a couple of other kind of really influential figures, but they were like the main two pioneers of this entire like massive thing. And, you know, the fingerprints were felt throughout all the different shows that they created and all the different movies that connect to it. And it works perfectly. If anything, if one of them were, wasn't working on it or if, you know, there were different people working on them and they were trying to act like it wasn't different, it, it you know, you'd notice immediately. So this isn't to say that having like strong voices on a project is 
bad. But what I mean is that I, I hope that we see a kind of more variety and more kind of different crazy unique things in say like an Aquaman movie should be ridiculously different to a Green Lantern movie and to a Batman movie. And I know DC loves making animated Batman movies. So when we get to kind of like talking about what characters we like to see get movies, what stories we like to see adapted, maybe let's throw like a no Batman rule on this because chances are if there's any stories that they haven't adapted for Batman, we'll be getting them in the next five years anyway. And that's a big thing. Like whenever a singular voice works, it really, really works. And that's one thing I really liked about the, the DC animated universe is just, you know, how it did have that feeling of like, you know, it, it all it all did feel like it belonged because, you know, it all did. And I didn't really get that from my admittedly limited exposure to the, uh, the animated movie universe. It just, I don't know, it, it felt like a little too disconnected. But at the same time, though, I really do uh, like pick up what you're saying. I one of the reasons why I like DC is that each of the different books very do much feel like they are their own separate thing. I think you really hit the nail on the head there with like, you know, an, um, a Green Lantern book feels very different from an Aquaman book, which phenomenal. And I really do like the tone that they set with uh, with Man of Tomorrow. I, I would like to see that expanded upon, but at the same time, I feel like it was really good from a self-contained standpoint. Um, but also kind of like that that year one approach i mean yes we've yeah. seen a million superman um origin stories done before and i really do like the bits and pieces they took from all the various ones to make what i think is a really good cohesive unit oh yeah definitely it's like there's a bit of like birthright in there there's a bit of like new 52 there's a bit of earth one there's a bit of what's the jeff john's book is it secret origin i think so yeah like the very psych like, silver age styled one there's a bit when of in doubt in uh, secret origins is jeff john's yeah that that's probably should have been a, a hint but like it's a nice kind of melding of all of like the different there's like there's a bit of man of steel in there there's a bit of christopher reeve in there mm -hmm. it's a really nice kind of amalgamation of all the different versions of superman's early stories um that we've seen before and even some that we haven't really seen before like what american alien did mm -hmm. kind of bring the best of all those together and you know talking about tim sheridan kind of like the main great figure behind this film it's very clear that he has such a rich and deep love of superman it's clear that he's just pulling from like oh, we should do this and you know this and there's this and this and this and bringing it all together and creating something really special and i think that if you can have writers and, and producers and people working on each one of those films that have that kind of same love and passion for the character that that film's about then they're going to naturally feel very different and they're going to naturally feel like a great representation of what that character is because i think first and foremost man of tomorrow gets superman in a way i haven't really seen in a lot of other movies live action or animated in mm -hmm. quite a long time it understands what makes superman work and it understands what makes superman and has made him so popular for the last like nearly a century so if we can get the same kind of approach if we can get people that love wonder woman and want to tell great wonder woman stories great if we can get people that love the flash and want to tell great flash animated movies hell you know make a get find the one person who like would die for plastic man and get him to make a plastic man movie just i mean hire, plastic man hire, is phenomenal i would absolutely hire good watch people that. hire good people who love the characters they're making about it's that simple <laughs> That's the thing. I, I really do like that it did pull from everything. And I think that if we saw that approach, if we saw, uh, I, I really do like the, like this year one approach. If we did that for more of these other characters, I think it's a great starting point. I think we should have these good standalone movies, seeing where these characters start, uh, seeing the inspirations being pulled from all the different various source materials and telling one just amalgamated good origin story would be yeah. a great jumping off point. And if they connect later on down the road, sure. But, you know, do the Avengers style where they all have their own movie, then they like can come together, Chris and crossover. Because obviously like the, the New 52 DC animated movie universe obviously starts with Justice League War. So it starts with this big team up and then kind of splits the and characters like apart and brings them back. Which I mean, I actually think Justice League War is one of the better films in that kind of series. I think mm -hmm. that's a really solid introduction to that universe's Justice League. But because of the way it started, it ultimately feels like when you're watching the solo movies, it's almost like a side mission to when we get back to the Justice League right. stuff, which is, you know, the way we're talking about it, if you kind of take the Man of Tomorrow approach, you're telling these great self-contained stories that are, you know, great Superman stories and great Batman stories and great, you know, Green Lantern stories. And then when you bring the characters together every so often, it feels like a bigger deal. It's like with the 
the DC, the Tim and, and Dini verse. It's like it's not like they just they could have just started with Justice League and made the Justice League show. Mm. You could watch Justice League and Justice League Unlimited without having like the prior understanding of Batman the animated series, Superman the animated series, and and so on. And you still enjoy those shows because they're great shows on their own. But it's like when you've watched all of Batman the animated series, when you've watched all of Superman the animated series, when you've watched you know Batman Beyond and, and, and everything else, you have that deep. It means that much more, right? I think it's the same. Like a Justice League movie will sell and people will like it because it's the Justice League, as long as it's not Justice League twenty seventeen. Well, but that, that's exactly but, the thing. Will it though? I think it will. I think especially for animated the like Good the people job, that buy Robin. and watch and, and and download and stream DC animated universe movies, you know the the people more kind of like us than the general audience. You know, it, sure. it is somewhat of a niche thing. They are people that most likely either read DC comics or have read DC comics or you know are into the movies and the shows and, and the games and whatever. And they're going to be the people that are like, yeah, Justice League. You know, that's the big thing. So I kind of think to an extent, Justice League always kind of sells itself. And as long as the story's good and you you know the characters, you know, like what's the is it Justice League Doom, the Tower of Babel adaptation? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a fairly like that's not connected to the 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 Tim and Dini verse. That's just its own um, movie. But like it handles all the characters well. You understand who everyone is and kind of what they're doing, and it works great as a self-contained movie. But if you have that kind of extended kind of connective tissue of okay, we've watched Man of Tomorrow, we've watched Batman, Son of Dead Parents in Alleyway, we've watched <laughs> Aquaman, My Man, the animated movie. It only exemplifies um, the, all the good things about seeing those characters come together. And I think that is a good approach to take as opposed to building the versions of those characters that we see in this long running series based around seeing them together. And then kind of when they're apart, feeling less special, if that makes sense. I don't know. It, if I'm... No, it, it does make sense. And another thing we talked about um, when we were getting off topic, when we were originally planning this, we were talking about your, uh, your new Avengers video that you're doing uh, when Bendis took over the book and how uh, the Avengers was very much not a premier title at the time. And Bendis had Maybe. to kind of make the book like worthwhile. People, he had to make people care about it. But you also mentioned that, uh, that the Justice League was always like a big seller for DC because they brought in all of their, their heavy hitting characters. I mean, There's it always was, Batman. But then it's funny because, right. you know, not to get sidetracked too much, but in, in the, the video I'm writing about New Avengers, I directly parallel the fact that in like the mid 90s and like, the Death of Superman era, the Justice League were kind of lame. Like, go and read the Death of Superman and see the issue where the Justice League International show up and. Okay, yeah, well, like that, that's a whole separate thing. I want to start. And fire. I love them, and I'm not going to let you discuss. Yeah, like, Justice League International are fine, but, you know. The from you know from when they first appeared in Brave and the Bold, the Justice League are like the heavy hitters of the DC universe. Right, it's the pillars of the universe. It's all the best-selling characters coming together, and so like there was a period in the nineties where, while like the likes of you know Blue Beetle, Bloodwind, Ice and Fire, not to be, you're gonna hate me when I include him, but Booster Gold, you know, are all great characters in their own right. Oh, you got Drake fuming. I know, I, I couldn't resist, but like... Putting on my about, flight ring. God. He's, a, he's about to jump through the screen. <laughs> ah! Um, I, I don't think what he's about to do is, is suitable for Twitch, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but it's like, those characters like are great in their own right, and you know you can tell great stories with them. But they're not what you expect when you think of the Justice League. When you think sure. of the Justice League, you think of like Justice League the Animated Series. You think of Justice League from the comics. You think of like this big, like all star lineup. And then like in the late nineties, you have Grant Morrison coming in and, and doing the JLA series, which kind of reaffirms that this is like the blockbuster comic at DC. This is like where you want to go if you want to see all like the premier characters. And that's something like you said, that when, when Bendis came to Marvel and did new Avengers, he tried to replicate, you know, the Avengers were kind of lame at that point. Mm -hmm. It was like, Hawkeye's there. And this is like, this is before the MCU. So like, it wasn't like, oh yeah, Hawkeye's good in Age of Ultron, I guess. It's like, uh, it's fucking Hawkeye. It's like, you've got the vision, you've got, Jack of Hearts was on the team. No one wants, no one's favorite book has Jack of Hearts on it. <laughs> well, see, so that's... Like, so, so oh, Bendis God, came yeah. in and basically just quite literally blew it all up and said, right now, 
the Avengers team that I'm writing has Spider-Man on it. It's got Wolverine on it. Daredevil's on it for a bit because those characters are cool and people want to read them. And it, it's I think it's just finding that balance between like staying true to the source material and what the characters are, but also kind of making it engaging and and accessible for for new readers like and new audiences. And I think that's something that the the DC animated universe really should kind of keep in mind going forward. Well, but that's really the big thing is that um, what like what I was trying to get to was that the the Justice League very much has you know the Trinity and the other premier characters of um, of the DC universe and. One thing that I really do love about the DC universe is that, you know, the cities that the stories are told in uh, are characters in themselves. Definitely the uh, individual mythoses uh, of each character seems to be a bit more pronounced than over at Marvel. You know, like, you know, your Bat family or Flash family, yada, yada, yada. You know, DC handles legacy a lot more. But also mm -hmm. ever since uh, Bendis took over the, uh, the Avengers book and with the MCU, that group dynamic has become very much a big focus over at Marvel. And you can definitely see that the MCU where pretty much every movie is now an Avengers movie to some extent. I mean, Captain America 3 was basically just another damn Avengers movie. It was it was just Avengers 2.5, really. Exactly. And so I think that that's a big thing uh, about the, the writing philosophy is that Marvel very much wants to focus on everybody as a unit, where DC takes a bunch of individual pieces and throws them together. I feel like like DC is more uh, of a salad think, bowl. Yeah, where... do you think it's safe to say that like DC celebrates, and obviously not to kind of get too much into the wormhole that is Marvel versus DC, but you kind of write about Marvel wanting to kind of have this onus on team books. I mean, to an extent, Marvel has always had a big uh, selection of team books, going back to like, mm -hmm. Fantastic Four and the, oh, so the X-Men and... yeah. Um, you know, that's always been quite a big part of the universe, but I've always kind of personally thought that DC's characters are unique and distinct. You know, you've got aliens and gods and, you know, weird creatures and you've uh, billionaires and all these kind of mythological and, and, and things that aren't real um, kind of coming together. Billionaires are very real, though, and I don't know how to tell you that. Maybe they shouldn't. I though. wish they weren't. <laughs> But it's like, it's this like, sell it, almost like the Justice League, where it is at its best. And, you know, when you watch like Justice League Unlimited is a great example of it. It celebrates the individuality of all these different characters. Yes. There's so many weird and, and wonderful characters all coming together that you wouldn't usually see, um, you know, in a book or in a show or in a film together. Right. And I think that that's something that, I think that kind of celebrating the individual Good and bringing job, the individuals together and, showing that kind of like they're, they're great as a team but they're also great because kind of like the sum of its parts and i think that that's something that dc's always done really well yeah and that's the design philosophy that i really wish that if there is going to be a connected animated universe that's the way that i would be interested in seeing it moving forward i mean well yes you know seeing the justice league all together during the uh, during war was fine and all and having them break apart Good it they job, do feel bro. more like side uh, missions at that point because that feels like the justice league is the main team the main character like that whereas mm -hmm. uh justly unlimited as you said was these characters coming together and where the individual characters are the the star of the show and, and very much you saw that more with justly unlimited where they were able to pull away from the core group and show off more of, of the small yeah. characters and give them their own focus i if we're going to see this moving forward then i love what they did with man of tomorrow i would love to see them do something similar with especially a flash story i think would be great obviously we have to do a batman one but you know we're doing a no batman rule today so i would like to see i'd like to see each corner of this new uh, again we don't even know if this is going to be a connected universe but knowing dc and how much they love connected universes uh, probably will be i would love to see each of these corners of the of this fleshed out and then we bring them together and then we tell a big story break apart come back together and just kind of keep moving in like a like a double helix no it's so aptly put so i think what we should do now uh, we've got a little bit of time left so i think what what'd be quite a fun thing to do for the the three of us if matty is still conscious i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it <laughs> <laughs> um to kind of just like th uh, throw out some like possible comic book stories or you know other stories that we'd like to see or even if it's just like particular characters that you think should be given a spotlight obviously let's talk about it as if you know they're doing both this kind of whatever this kind of post man of tomorrow DC animated universes, but then also if they're also going to get back to doing the more kind of like 
straightforward adaptations like Dark Knight Returns, Killing Joke. Um, like if we take both of them as like two different uh, almost like publishing units for the DC animated stuff. If there's any like particular stories or characters or even if it's just like a time period, like I want more Silver Age stuff or I want more Golden Age stuff. Like, is there anything like you guys would particularly like like to see in the future? Well, I already mentioned that I really want to see uh, a Flash movie being handled in the same style of Man of Tomorrow. Um, you know, I never really read a lot of the old 90s stuff because frankly, I haven't been reading comics for as long as you guys. I, I think I've only been reading for God like six, seven years at this point. I you just... got me beat. Oh, really? Okay, yes. fair enough. But I uh, think I'm like the 20-year veteran here. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know so much, but uh, I got into The Flash with the New 52, and I think it's that it really worked. Uh, the first volume move forward was really good. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that. Now, granted, I did enjoy that we were looking five years into the character having already existed. You know, he already had, uh, you know, built the suit. He has a little bit of a rep in Central City. And seeing it uh, delved into a bit more with Rebirth was nice. It'd be nice to see, like, a good hybrid between that kind of like we'd sell for man of tomorrow where it like he was already flying around metropolis but he wasn't superman yet if you know flash was you know the streak or the blur whatever they called him in uh the, the cw show i think that could be a lot of fun to pull from various source materials from the comics from i, I really liked the tv show i haven't watched it in like a season or two but especially the first two seasons i thought were top mm -hmm. i i think that would be a really good place to to kick off from Superman. I mean, obviously, next thing we're going to do is Batman. Let's, let's make no mistake, but Flash would be another great uh, jumping on point. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a, a really strong choice. I think you can do a lot of really interesting things with the Flash and animation, especially like visually and, and stylistically. Oh, yeah. like, that's a character that's like tailor made for, for animation. Um, two, two or three characters that like, particularly stood out to me were Shazam, I think it's yep. he's a character that definitely um, translates really well into animation, and um, there's a like there's so many different. She's, you know, Shazam's a character that's been around since the you know the late thirties. There's so many different stories you can tell, and so many different eras of Shazam. Obviously, you've got like the the New Fifty Two stuff, which very much is like what the the live action films kind of take inspiration from, which was phenomenal. Which is great, you know that kind of initial like two volumes of Jeff Johns's Shazam run is really good but then you've got like the in the 70s and 80s when dc finally bought him from Fawcett and brought him in the, i think there were two uh like mini series which introduced billy batson and he's captain marvel and this is the, the dc universe there's like at least two i think there was one in like maybe like the late 70s and one in the early 80s that are both like really good yeah, i read the but 80s obviously, like loved it yeah, well, I think what it was was they did, they introduced him into the universe, then Crisis happened, so they're like, everyone's <laughs> getting again. a new origin, so, you know, we'll just do it again. But then you've also got, like, the Golden Age stuff. Like, one of my all-time favorite um, animated shows is the Fleischer Superman series, and it's crazy that that show still holds up and looks great. I'd love to, because obviously, like, New Frontier kind of goes back to that animation style slightly, Obviously, you know, with like the Darwin Cook influence, but I'd, I'd quite like to see more kind of like Golden Age-esque stuff. I think that'd be a, a really weird and an interesting kind of corner of DC's history and DC's universe to kind of chart in an animated film. Yeah, I think it'd be great. Maddie, you got anything? You I wait? mean, yeah, um, I, I feel like things that I want are things that aren't going to sell. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen, my favorite character is Booster Gold. You don't, I, I get it. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I mean, we we said no Batman, but what about like the question? You know, like like that would be Good a fun, job, you yes, know, kind of kind of get this a similar gritty thing going on, but with yeah. a different spin on it. That'd be a, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I still maintain. I have been saying this for years now. I would like a a movie set in the future of batman beyond yes. but 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 fuck batman beyond you know we we know we know a decent we know a decent amount of about him oh, but we were given a whole team of heroes in that show with their justice league yeah a and i've always found it fascinating that like warhawk 
is, mm. you know, the the son of a Green Lantern, and he's working side by side with an eight year old Green Lantern. And I feel like there's some weird drama to, to to play off of there, you know, like a whole why did the ring choose this fucking kid yeah. and not me kind of kind of situation. So I would love an intergalactic Warhawk Cairo buddy cop movie. That'd be really good. And That's I also, a bold especially, choice. Especially if you want to bring the Batman aspect into it. They will. You know. It, it, you 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 play off of the the drama that like is built up in Return of the Joker uh, mm -hmm. uh, of of how Bruce had a a child prodigy and you know everything bad happened and now there's a child on the Justice League yeah and, and, and he's got to you know come in talk to Superman be like hey what the hell are you doing like I know the the Guardians chose him we can't do shit about the guardians you know and what they want to do that intergalactic nonsense but this is earth right this is our jurisdiction why are you doing this why are you letting a kid on the team and like this doesn't even have to be anything that's set in the the the, the bruce tim continuity because like that's really all we know about batman beyond is from the bruce tim continuity so you could do it in a completely yeah, we... different art style I, I mean, I mean, like we, I mean, we read the comics. I love, I love right, the Batman but, Beyond, but, Justice but, Beyond comics. But that, but that all builds off of no, the stuff yeah, for that, sure. That you know, Bruce Tim and Co. set up. Yeah. So, so right. you can pick and choose what you want to bring in from the Bruce Tim stuff and leave other stuff behind. Do it in a completely new art style. Yeah, whatever. bring in new things entirely if you want to. But, but I mean, like just the whole Justice League Beyond thing, they are sitting on a gold mine that like they have yet to figure out how to tap into. Definitely. They barely knew how to tap uh, into Batman Beyond. Yeah, I mean, Batman Beyond is one of my favorite. Oh, uh, I have a little yeah. shrine to it in my room. I, I, I love Batman Beyond so much. It's I funny, mean, you know, mean... staying on like the, the tangent of Batman adjacent things, I am going to do a Ben Affleck and Batman v Superman and break my one rule. Um, for my next suggestion great um, thanks is, i think one rules? story that like it is a batman story but it's more about the other characters in it than but batman just kind of like leads you through it mm -hmm. i think that like as soon as i say it you'll be like holy shit this will be perfect for animation and that's the late 80s grant morrison graphic novel arkham asylum holy shit this would be perfect for animation Earth. like that book is <laughs> visually one of the most like incredible things i've ever seen Oh, I, I mean, like, I, I just recently read that for the first time and was just blown away. Yeah, uh, like, it's like, so good. Like, that's not like, just a comic that, like, transcends. Yeah, so. it's, 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 it's like a, it is, it's like an animation just, like, pasted onto page. It's so tailored. Like, you can imagine, you can get some, like, I'm just thinking about all the things you could do with characters like the Joker and, It'd probably be like one of the most ambitious and wild things that DC have ever done in animation, and like when you look at which the, means which means they will probably fuck it up. <laughs> which means they'll probably insert something about Bruce fucking Barbara. Of course, <laughs> but like I just think like a story like that is like that'd be so. And obviously, like, the reason they haven't done it can't be because of like they're worried about the rating because like. You know, Killing Joke and Apocalypse War. There's some pretty like dark undertones in a lot of the more recent films that have been putting out. That it's not kind of like geared exclusively at children and families. It, oh yeah, Lobo it, said it, so many swear words in Man of Tomorrow. Yeah, even Man of Tomorrow, which is kind of like a more I'd call that like a more family friendly thing than what they have been doing. Mm -hmm. It still has an edge to it. So I think like obviously that can't be the reason why they haven't done it. So just do it. Hell, just fuck it. Get it. Conroy and Hamill back and do it. It'll be great. Another I'm one. Um, I, I will heed the floor in a second. But one <laughs> more that I kind of uh, want to throw out there. Similarly, because I, you know, when I'm thinking about animation, I'm thinking of how you can bring these stories to life in a really interesting way visually. And it's a series of characters that I think would be awesome in an animated movie anyway. Yeah, just like a national. Say, I'm just going to leave the call <laughs> right now. Thanks, everyone. Uh, no, so uh, New Gods. Yeah, okay. That's a New fair. Gods Let's do movie. It. Let's do it. There was, like, there was supposed to be one back in the day. Uh, um, but like 
Mike Mignola did a whole bunch of concept art, you know, for Ooh. Warner Brothers. And, and that's that's all out there. Uh, and it, it was like around the time of like late 90s, like around mm -hmm. Iron Giant and all that yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they didn't go through with it. Because if you if you look at that concept art, it, it is just like, yes, please give me. Because obviously like the fourth world stuff like Orion and High Father and, and Big Bardo and Dark Side, that's all in the DC animated series like already like we see the genesis job, and we see apocalypse Robin. like that's a big part of the superman show and it's a big part of justice league and unlimited so like it's not like that's completely uncharted territory but i want like a movie that takes like the original like jack kirby one from the early 70s and tells like this epic kind of like shakespearean tragedy between these two warring um worlds essentially and here's how you go with the full ante you do it in the style of jack kirby I mean, you have to at that point. You like, you kind of try and replicate what they did like with Killing Joke and try and replicate like Brian Boland's art. Just do like a full on, because it's like, you know, Marvel have been sitting on a gold mine, which is animation for decades. The animation department is kind of laughably uh, non-existent. It's like the amount of stories they could tell in like the style of Jack Kirby is, you know, near unlimited. You know, Kirby didn't do as, as much for DC. You know, he did Challenges of the Unknown and, and New Gods and some other stuff. But, like, he's one of the biggest visionaries in comic books ever. And, you know, I think his original Fourth World run on New Gods is one of the most ambitious things that I've ever really seen in, like, a mainstream comic book. And I, I, But I don't think it's, like, too high concept that you can't tell it. Like, it's a very grounded story told in a fantastical way. And, like, if you can get, like general audiences into thor you can get them into like orion it's it's very similar it's just it, it oh i mean jesus in space i i just whenever whenever you know i was originally watching superman the animated series as it was airing like mm -hmm. orion was my boy yeah like, like like any any time he showed up it was just like all right shit's about to go down let's fucking go like like give me more of this man uh, uh, and like the new god stuff is, is is so well established in dc lore, right like dark side's the big bad in the yeah, snyder exactly. cut we yeah. had dark steppenwolf side. we like like and we, we throughout all of the animated movies like dark side was was behind everything yeah, exactly. in the, the decamu or or in the dcau he's you know such a big force and it, it's like people understand dark side and apocalypse mm -hmm. and all of it but they don't have like, you know, the what's going things. on just specifically with the characters that are pertinent to that story without yeah. needing the earth characters. I think that, I think that's a really good point. It's like the, the people that would watch these movies anyway, and the people like the fan base for the DC animated films, they do not need an introduction to Dark Side and Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, Dark Side, as far as like big like intergalactic dc villains or not talking like the joker lex luther like the more like the cosmic villains he's got to be by far the most famous of them oh maybe, no, maybe, with, like, with, without a doubt maybe brainiac but like mm. you know dark side was even in smallville not well, very the, well but still the point stands well, and so yeah. i don't think it's a, as hard a sell as as you might think like People know Darkseid. You know, once the, the Snyder Cut comes out, people will know Darkseid and probably know, like, the lore of Apocalypse a bit better generally. And I think, that, like, there's so much untapped potential in, like, the story of it. Because, you know, when you boil the fourth world stuff down, like Kirby's initial stuff, it's very Shakespearean. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, that style of story, it's not hard to tell. People know that kind of narrative and that kind of plot. It's just now in a more kind of fantastical and over the top setting and, and, a, and a setting in a style that would actually be a really good fit for animation so i think it makes all the sense in the world well i don't disagree that uh the new gods and fourth world stuff would be really entertaining in animation but I, I, it's interesting that you said that if, if we can make people care about thor then we can make them care about the new gods but even though i loved the first thor movie the general consensus by most audiences was that they didn't really start caring about the character much until ragnarok which just undid a, a lot of it and made him less of a cosmic character 
I mean, yeah, sure, Possibly. he was he was on Zakar and and being doing space stuff, but he was more of just a, a sci-fi action hero more than like the traditional Shakespearean stuff that you would expect from like a fourth world. But I, I agree. I think that that the new gods would just absolutely lend themselves uh, to to animation. Like just seeing the Kirby dots animated. Uh, yeah. I Whenever we we've seen in the past, it's it's so appealing. Yeah, I just I just want more Jack Kirby animated stuff. It, I mean, it, it just looks yeah, so pretty. It. So the only other thing I could suggest is kind of similarly in that vein. I don't know if you've both read Tom King's Mr. Miracle series. I did, and I didn't I get it. I have not yet. That would probably be the darkest, and but not like edgy dark, just like depressing just and heartbreaking. Like it's not, I genuinely, I'm not the biggest Tom King fan. I'm not, didn't really care for his Batman run. Didn't really That's care for Heroes in Crisis. But like, I think Mr. Miracle is one of the best things I've read this decade. I, I, and I know it's 2020. <laughs> so, um, just just as a heads up, uh, James said that we got to wrap up uh, by 8:45. So we got yeah, like no three. We I've got, got like my... three minutes left. Uh, oh, okay. Make sure you go to Patreon.com. <laughs> no, I will. I will, I will say. I will say one of my final thoughts of something that um, I don't think we need DC animation to do, but I think they will do because of how much they've been pushing it lately, is some sort of Watchmen something. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know if it would be uh, an adaptation of the original comic, or if they would say, hey, can we condense before Watchmen into, you know, a fun animated movie? But I, because, because of Doomsday Clock, because of the the Watchmen TV show, the, of the new Rorschach yep. book we're getting, like I 100% see them doing something Watchmen animated. I mean, if you're gonna if you're going to do any sort of animated Watchmen thing, it, the only thing that would make sense would be the original film. But you can't do that as one movie because otherwise, like, like I for the most part, I think the Snyder. Watchmen film is as good as you're going to get with a live mm -hmm. action Watchmen movie. Yeah, I, I mean like the, the only thing they didn't do right is there's no giant squid, right? Yeah. I mean like Terry uh, Gilliam who was attached to make a Watchmen film for a decade um, literally said that this comic book is unfilmable. You would need to make like an eight hour movie to like fully incorporate and include everything just necessary for the people to understand what's going on. So I think the fact that Snyder did that in like three or so hours is a real testament to that film. And I, I think that definitely in terms of live action, we did it once, let's never try it again. Yeah. Like we have the show, which is more of like a spiritual sequel, which I think is great. We've got that, let's leave that over there. If you're gonna do any sort of animated Watchmen thing, I think you have to do like an animated series or like a- Ah, Saturday morning Watchmen. That's the oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don will give you cancer and it'll turn into a car. Yeah, just do that. But it's like, I don't want to see before Watchmen because it's not very good. And the thought of a Doomsday Clock animated movie actually makes my skin crawl slightly. I'm so in other words, honest. in other words, Rorschach animated movie. I mean, we're going to get like some sort of like, oh, could you imagine how like Drake uh, when we were talking the other day about like, oh, you don't want to suggest a Booster Gold show. It's like, no, because they'll just make him Deadpool and it's just going to be really tedious and tiresome. Like imagine how tiresome a Rorschach animated movie would be. Like <laughs> uh, that's just... Well, oh, I hate everything about it. With that said, we've just, hit the, uh, we've just hit the 845 mark. So we started out with the hope that Man of Tomorrow gives us and now the despair that the, <laughs> the, the capitalistic system w is giving us by draining every last inch of creativity out of one of the best properties. DC it's 2020, everybody. Owned. I fight the power, people. And with that, we have up next our special secret uh, person. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Ooh. Uh, but you're about to find out. Uh, it's not Owen, me. Drake, it's been a ton of fun chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it another time soon. Definitely. Where I'm not quite as about to fall dead. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs>